Okay, so you've been trying to learn how to read a micrometer. Uh, basically, it's an addition game. You have your 100, 200 thousandths, your different numbers here, the small divisions in between. Eventually, you come over to a vernier here, and it's adding everything up. Uh, I can't spend the whole short video and explain that, but here's the thing. If you think you get it, a lot of people have videos out there on it. Uh, if you try to check your numbers, just come here and put a caliper on it. Use, use a cheat sheet. So your electronic caliper will tell you if your addition was right or not. So that gives you a quick check for your math. More importantly is getting a correct feel. And if you want to get a correct feel, you need to start measuring things. When you start out, get yourself some ball bearings of known size. You can open up the mic. You can touch down on the ball and don't use just the ratchet. You can use the ratchet to get a general idea of where it should be and you know the size from checking what the ball is supposed to be, but then you'll develop an even better feel where you can get it more accurate than what the ratchet has once you learn. But you learn that on a ball because the ball won't be binding and that's your first thing you want to do for measuring. Now we'll go on a little further to that for the people that want to learn a little bit more. I forgot to get, get them out here. I was going to try and organize all of this together. But we go into things like gauge blocks. So you can get a set of gauge blocks and you take your set of gauge blocks like this one is supposed to be a half an inch. So we can open up our micrometer. We can bring it down. I don't know if this is calibrated or not but you can uh, check your feel. And this probably, because it hasn't been cleaned, that's probably why I'm coming up just a little bit over the, uh, oh, yeah, John, measuring it the wrong way. <laughs> this way is a half inch. That is the nominal stock size. Okay, and again, we're not quite cleaned. New mic, new, uh, I didn't clean either one of them off. I just picked them up to start explaining. So it's supposed to be a half inch, but I would have to go beyond my normal feel for that. And that's because there's a little bit of a protective coating of some oil on here. And you can have oil that will mess with you a little bit for measuring. Uh, if it's thin oil, WD-40, PB blast, or stuff like that, it doesn't make an effect in the normal world. Some places it will. Um, but you have gear oil, you have uh, stuff that hardens up to a wax like what's on this and it will definitely make a difference. And I'm not gonna go cleaning those all off to show that. The next thing I wanted to do, um, let me go back here for a second though. Initially, you start out on a ball. And then, what is best to go to next as far as measuring? And it's good to measure things you know the size of. I really like the balls because you can buy them from bearing stores and places uh, that, that are a size, a size, already known. Then you can go to pin gauges. Pin gauges are another one. And why I say to go to pin gauges next after balls is because when you're practicing or a known piece of, of good solid rod, this one you have no problem again with rolling it. You're going to find the proper place anywhere in here is correct to hit the high spot of this. However, we roll it. All we have to do is get used to not cocking it because if you're cocked a little bit, you can get friction before it's ready. So feeling for dead square, you get used to that next by doing a round piece. Then go to a flat piece. The hardest, the hardest of all to get used to doing, as far as uh, picking up a zero on a micrometer, the hardest one is where you have the standards that you set the micrometer by. And the reason they're hard is because they come up and they're not always dead square. You try and hold one where you feel it square in line with the spindle here. The two ends won't be absolutely square. It doesn't absolutely center. So you've got to feel where it actually comes up square to get the place where it zeroes out. And so that one is still set at two inches. Um, you, If it tends to roll a little bit like if you hit one side and it wants to really rock around walk around no matter what you do your micrometer is bent 
And that happens sometimes. Some people do think of these as a C-clamp. They don't normally admit it, but some people are very crude. And you can bend the frame. You can bend the frame most of the time by dropping them. Not, usually, if you over-torque it, you're just going to strip the screw out. But um, you, they get dropped. Nobody wants to admit it, and they end up bent. And that's, that's the indication of one that's bent. And while there might be some remediation you can do for the most part once it's bent, it's bent. Now, the other thing I was wondering...